Hey folks, today is Friday, February 28th, 2020. As usual, my name is Jake Baldino, here to get you caught up with the gaming new stuff. And as you can tell, we are at Boston, Massachusetts for PAX East 2020. I feel like we're here, every, I feel like we were just here. When were we here? This oh, time last year. a year ago, that's right. Time flies. Shout out to a lot of you guys who we have seen so far. Uh, if you don't know already, uh, we are doing a panel. We are doing the live version of Game Ranks live on Saturday. Uh, the information should be right here. We'd love to see some of you guys if you are in town or if you're here for PAX. But anyway, let's jump into the news. And for the sake of getting you guys caught up, earlier in the week, uh, Microsoft came out with new news about the Xbox Series X. Uh, Kind of like a spec dump. Here it is. The big takeaway, of course, is 12 teraflops, but I'm not gonna like pretend to tell you exactly what that means. Uh, the big thing, though, worth noting, is that it is allegedly uh, twice as powerful as the Xbox One X, so you have that. It's also going to have ray tracing through DirectX. The other big thing that developers seem to be excited about is variable rate shading, but then on the consumer side, some interesting things. Uh, the first is to be able to quick resume multiple games, uh, so not just being able to start up and play one game uninterrupted. Uh, apparently the thing is powerful enough for you to do that with multiple titles. I think that's very interesting and it's curious to see how the hardware will actually utilize that. But the thing that got seemingly a lot of like Xbox fans and stuff excited is smart delivery, uh, which is essentially, we've talked about it in the past, Xbox's whole uh, platform system that they're trying to build. They just want you playing their games, they don't really care where. Smart delivery is going to be uh, Xbox's ecosystem being smart enough for you to buy the game in one place and then you can play that game anywhere and it knows what platform it's playing. It on. So if you buy a game for Xbox Series X and you play it on there, but then you for some reason have to jump to your Xbox One, uh, it's going to know that and be able to adjust accordingly and you can still play that copy. And I think that's a positive thing going forward and I'd like to see all the major platform holders do that. Is that going to be a thing? I don't know. Uh, Bethesda still wants us to buy Skyrim 17 times, so I don't know. It is worth pointing out though that uh, Cyberpunk 2077 news, a little bit for you, CD Projekt Red came out and said that, hey, they're jumping on that feature. So uh, expect to have some nice parity between different versions of Cyberpunk 2077, depending on what Xbox you're playing on. That's kind of cool. Now, I don't want to sound like a, you know, like a Microsoft channel. Uh, there just hasn't been too much news about the PlayStation 5. As you guys have known, they've been pretty quiet. I am dying for news. Uh, we have seen a lot of rumblings lately. I don't know if you saw this on Twitter, Tom, like, and, and th forums and stuff, but a lot of people are speculating that the PlayStation 5 is going to not make it for holiday 2020. I've actually heard multiple like yeah. Some production issues, yeah. Stuff. And honestly, at this point, I take a console like a game, especially as a PC person. I don't have too much of a horse in the race, but I can look and say, hey, take all the time you need, make it good. I don't know. Now, in other news, we finally got our first look at Baldur's Gate. Now, this is a big deal because uh, the series has been around for a while and we haven't seen a new game uh, and Larian Studios is working on it, the guys behind Divinity Original Sin. So it's kind of like a match made in heaven and uh, they revealed everything here at PAX and it's great. I actually got to see uh, a playthrough of the game with some developers earlier this week and it's pretty awesome. It almost seems just like a Divinity Original Sin but more hardcore more of a budget, more Dungeons and Dragons influences, and a big emphasis on uh, storytelling, uh, character decisions, where the camera gets nice up and close. Uh, the characters look pretty gorgeous. Uh, the, the, the way we got to see a playthrough with a character that was a noble and a vampire, so you're dealing with the fact that you are a vampire, but also you are infected by the Mind Flayers, which is a D&D thing if you don't know. Uh, so there's a lot of complex story stuff going on that ties directly into the turn-based RPG gameplay, and I I think the potential is huge. Also, I do want to point out that the developer playing through the demo that we saw was getting his ass kicked. It seems like a really, really hard game. So I think that's good. I think RPG fans like really have something to look forward to this. I think it's promising. Uh, so I just wanted to say, like, if you haven't been paying attention yet, uh, maybe you should, especially if you like Divinity Original Sin, stuff like that. Uh, check out the gameplay. I think we can link some of that down in the description below. Now, moving on, I just want to talk about, like, can we talk about how like massive and crazy the next flight simulator is going to be. So now we have official confirmation from Microsoft and the developers that uh, Microsoft Flight Sim is going to have every airport in the world in the game. That is 37,000 airports. Now, the, the previous flight simulator games have had stuff like this, uh, but what we have here is like fully detailed airports with like cars driving around and they really actually apparently took the time to individually customize each one. And that is insane. I think this game is gonna be so vast. Tom and I got to see it a couple months ago and it's just wild with how it utilizes real world maps for it. Uh, 
this is this is a separate news story. This one's older. We we may have talked about this already, but <laughs> the game, the actual data for all of that was apparently over two million gigabytes. That's crazy. This is definitely one of the most vast, biggest games ever. Uh, we just hope you like realistic airplane flying simulators if you want to experience it. Still, we've been like talking about the developer documentaries and stuff, and we've been showing off gameplay. Uh, it's it's wild, man. I think it's really impressive what people can do. Also, in other news, hmm, Rockstar seems to be doing something. Uh, it may be small. It may be huge. That's with Rockstar. You have no idea. So if you guys haven't seen, Rockstar has updated some imagery on their website uh, to some really cool stylistic pieces uh, with the logo and stuff like that. And it's leading to speculation that they're, they're going to be announcing something soon. Uh, you can say that with Red Dead Redemption 2, before that was announced, Rockstar also started changing up some of their logos and imagery before then. Uh, there's a lot of speculation. Some people still throw out Grand Theft Auto 6. I don't know if it's that. You could throw out Bully. You could throw out literally everything. You know what, at this point, I'm gonna still throw a gamble for something like Agent because this imagery is very like high class and like bougie and funky. Maybe, maybe it's something spy related. I don't know. I am literally pulling at straws. Correct, you're saying agent. Yeah, I still want agent to be a thing. Leave me alone. <laughs> I'm very curious to hear what you guys think it is down in the comments. I think we can have a lot of fun with that or where it turns out to be nothing, I don't know. But uh, next, let's break down some things you may have missed during the week. This is all gonna be linked down in the description below. Uh, the first is a new trailer for Doom Eternal, a game we're really excited about, although the music in this trailer is kinda whack. Uh, the other thing is a surprise announcement for a Samurai Jack video game, Samurai Jack Battle Through Time. It looks like a 3D action game. Uh, the art style is a very interesting choice, but I'm kinda into it, I don't know. I love Samurai Jack, so. I'm all about this, let's give it a shot. Uh, but the biggest thing, in case you missed it, is Resident Evil 3. Uh, apparently a bunch of press outlets and YouTubers got to get their hands on the game and play it. Apparently it's good, uh, but thankfully what comes with that is a bunch of impressions and also a lot of new gameplay. We got to see the Nemesis in action quite a bit, and it's very interesting how they're doing it, especially if you've played the original game. It seems like he's gonna be on your ass a lot more actively in the game. I still don't know how I feel about that. I said it when they first announced it. I don't want him to be just like how Mr. X's mechanics worked in, in Resident Evil 2, but we'll see. So far, it still looks awesome. The dodge move is finally like fully confirmed. It looks great. I am so hyped. But uh, a new story that caught our eye earlier, Rainbow Six Siege is doing some interesting things uh, jumping to the next gen. Ubisoft has announced that they are working to have uh, next gen, like next PlayStation, next Xbox versions of Rainbow Six Siege ready for launch. Not only that, complete uh, multiplayer cross-generational action so you can just kind of keep playing. We talked about it earlier with, with Xbox, with the buying certain copies of the game. I just like to see this like consumer positive stuff. I feel like we talk so much about like, how bad microtransactions are and all this shitty stuff and yes, but at least stuff like this is happening. I think that's very cool. I think for people to be able to just jump up to the next gen, keep playing, have all their progress, have all their friends, I think that's awesome. I'm curious to see if they're gonna do it with other games. I think maybe they're doing it with Rainbow Six because it's like one of their biggest things and now it's like an eSport, so let's see. I still just want Rainbow Six Vegas, make another one. I'm just gonna keep bringing that up in videos because I'm an old man now. Also, I just wanted to point out, uh, the creator of the Konami code has passed away. Uh, Konami put out a statement, uh, the creator of the original up, up, down, down, left, right, left, right, BA, start. And you know, obviously an incredibly influential code that has helped a lot of people out and also has just kind of spanned multiple video game generations has passed away. So our condolences, just wanted to highlight that. Just a, a very cool, legendary, thing in the game industry. His name was Kazuhisha Hashimoto, if you want to look it up. But uh, yeah, little video game history uh, changes today. Also, one last thing, uh, Kojima Productions seemingly may be teasing something. If you caught this on their Twitter account, what is this? A lot of people are freaking out that they are going to be talking about something next week. What is it going to be? Some people are going nuts with the fact that uh, the word silent is in the in the tweet, like it's gonna be Silent Hills. I don't know, I just hope it's something cool and not just a trailer for Death Stranding on PC. As much as that is exciting, I wanna see their next project. I mean, they're, they're riding a high from Death Stranding, so let's see what they got now. I, I have a question. People think it'll happen next week? Yeah. Why next week? Yeah, if you zoom in on his little notepad that he's writing on, it says next week. Oh, so they're, they're definitely being cheeky. I'm very curious to see what it's gonna be, so. Keep your eyes peeled, maybe we'll make a video. Uh, now before we go, we gotta do that console giveaway we do every single week. You know how this goes down by now. We don't stop when we're at a convention, dude. Uh, linked in the description below, you click it to sign up, you enter once, then you're entered for good, and then every single week we go in to randomly choose one person to win a free console of their choice. And this week's person is gonna be this person right here. 
congratulations. Be sure to keep an eye on your inbox, your spam box, stuff like that, because we're going to be reaching out to you to find out how we can send you your free stuff. But now, I want to talk to you guys real quick about the news that has been going on all this week, uh, next-gen stuff. What do you think the deal is with PlayStation uh, on the Xbox side? What do you think about the specs they've announced? We also put a whole video out, I believe, breaking that down. If it's out at the time of making this, I'll link that. But I want to hear from you all the stories. If you like the Resident Evil 3 gameplay or not, how do you feel about the Nemesis? Guys, let's talk about anything. Uh, we'll be down there as much as possible. Things are kind of chaotic because we're here. So if you want to yell at me right on Twitter and Instagram directly, you can. That's all linked below. But thank you guys for coming around every Friday. And thank you if, if you said hi at PAX. We really love meeting some of you. Uh, clicking the like button does help us out for real. We do appreciate that. And if you're new, consider subscribing because we put out videos every single day. But as always, thanks for watching. We'll see you guys next time. Pizza's on me. Oh, I did a thumbs up. I don't usually do a thumbs up. I usually do like a, wait, no, start over.